Hello, my name is Lukas Eichmeier, and in this part of Solar Fundamentals, we're going to speak about solar radiation measurements. For the correct design of any solar system, it is important to know the boundary conditions at site. These boundary conditions include the solar radiation, the ambient temperature, and also wind speed measurements, and of course other measurements as well. A device which is able to measure the incident radiation, the total or global incident radiation, is the pyranometer. Within this device, an absorbing surface is shielded from heat losses and connected to thermocouples. Depending on the incident flux, the temperature which, read, which is reached at the surface is proportional to the incident flux. Pyranometers are usually placed flat on the ground and measure the total or global irradiation. The total or global irradiation can be calculated when knowing the beam radiation, the incidence angle, and the diffuse radiation. In concentrating solar power systems, the beam radiation IB is very important as these systems can only utilize beam radiation. In order to calculate now the beam radiation, we also need to know the diffuse radiation. In order to obtain the diffuse radiation, we need to modify a pyranometer with a few things. In order to measure the diffuse radiation, we attach a shadow band to a pyranometer, which allows us to measure the diffuse radiation. There are commonly two different pyranometers with a shadow band used. We have on the left the fixed shadow band pyranometer, on the right a rotating shadow band pyranometer. In the rotating shadow band pyranometer, the shadow band rotates within a matter of seconds and is able to measure both the total and the diffuse radiation. The fixed shadow band pyranometer is only able to measure the diffuse radiation. If, if, we know, if we now know both the diffuse radiation and the total radiation, and we know at which time of the day and which day of the year we are, we can calculate the beam radiation with the simple equation here. As a next step, we're going to calculate the beam radiation for Stockholm. Again, the same day, the 26th of July, at a clock time of 15.45, which corresponds to solar time of 14 hours and 50, and the zenith angle of 50.2 degrees, which we have already calculated. I'm going to recommend you now that you stop the video for a few minutes or a few seconds, calculate the beam radiation yourself, and I'm going to show you the results in a few minutes. In the measurements of the pyranometer, of the rot rotating shadow band pyranometer, we can see that the total radiation is about 800 watts per square meter, and the diffuse radiation down here is about 200 watts per square meter. Knowing these two values and the zenith angle, using the equation shown before, we can calculate the beam radiation to be 937 watts per square meter. Another measurement device which is directly able to measure the beam radiation is the normal incidence pyheliometer or NIP. It uses a long tube which needs to be aligned to be pointing at the sun and it measures directly the beam radiation. To simplify the operation of the NIP, an acceptance angle and acceptance cone of about 5 degrees is used for the incidence radiation. The absolute cavity radiometer is a very accurate measurement device, which is also able to measure the direct beam radiation. In the device, an electric current is used to keep the temperature within the cavity as a constant level. Depending on the solar, inci solar radiation incident, more or less uh, electricity is needed to keep the temperature at a constant level. The electricity is then proportional to the incident radiation. These devices are usually used in order to calibrate pyranometers or pyheliometers. And finally, we have large-scale measurements. We use satellite measurements in order to measure the solar radiation 
for big scales with a resolution of down to about 10 kilometers. The incident and also the reflected radiation are measured along with cloud covers. Using different formulas and equations and models, you can calculate the beam that I've used and also the total radiation. However, it is very important to point out that these models have weaknesses. The solar radiation on site is strongly dependent on the microclimate. In order to size and design a solar power plant properly, it is important to make measurements directly on site over a longer time of period, a longer period of time. Thank you very much. This was Solar Fundamentals about the measurement of solar radiation.